Hello brothers and sisters. In these next three JavaScript programming video lessons, you'll be learning to create custom dynamic dialog boxes. This way you can use the same box over and over for many different types of dialog. And if I had to guess, I would say that 100 different people have asked me how to make custom dialog boxes, mainly the custom confirmation box. So in the first video here, we'll show you how to create custom alert boxes. In the second video of the series, we'll show you how to make custom confirmation boxes. And then in the third video, we'll show you how to make custom prompt boxes. And then we'll also discuss other things that you can add to your dialog boxes, like all kind of form elements, multiple choice questions, whatever you can dream up. Before we begin, let's take a look at the finished product of what you'll be learning to create. Let's take a look at the default JavaScript alert box. It says, you look very pretty today. Okay. Now here's the custom alert box that I created. It gives you the advantage of you being able to style every aspect of this box. You being able to write whatever you want in the heading, the body, and the footer of that box. And these buttons can say anything you want them to say. The box could be any size that you want it to be. And it can be positioned on the page anywhere that you want it to be. And another cool advantage is that you get a white overlay. It's basically a div that lays over the web page and disables the web page until the user interacts with your dialog window. So they cannot interact with the web page or any of the content on it until they interact with your dialog window. Now we're going to begin with what would be your existing web page. And I just slapped a button on the page that has an on click event. And in the on click event, I'm just firing off an alert the default JavaScript alert. So let's see what that gives us in the browser window. A default JavaScript alert. Okay. Now we want to make a custom alert. We also want to make it very reusable. That way we don't have to have a bunch of different custom alert boxes on the page. We can just put one dialog box on the page and use it for alerts, confirmation, prompts, and any other custom things that we want. We can use that same box over and over for many, many different types of dialog. So we'll start in the HTML and we'll add the dialog box overlay and the dialog box itself. So you can see I've added those two elements. Div with an ID of dialog overlay and it starts and ends right there on that line 13 and then dialog box itself. And the dialog box contains a child div and inside of that child div there's three child divs. The first one being dialog box head the second one is dialog box body and the third one is dialog box foot. And you can imagine what those things are within the dialog box. And we're going to dynamically populate those things within a function. That way this box, this dialog box, and this overlay can be used over and over again for as many different dialogs as you need on your page. Now we're going to apply the CSS for this dialog overlay div and the dialog box as well as the three divs with IDs inside of it. So let's put that CSS in place and I'll explain it real quick. This one affects the div overlay. This one affects the dialog box. This one affects the dialog box heading. This affects the dialog box body. And this affects the dialog box foot. So any styles that you want those areas to have in the dialog box, this is where you affect them. And this is all just basically cosmetics and I'm not going to explain all of the CSS properties, but I will explain the important ones. The dialog overlay is set to display none by default, and so is the dialog box itself. Both are set to display none. The dialog overlay has an opacity of 0.8, that way the user can kind of see through it. And the dialog overlay is what disables the web page while the user is interacting with your dialog window. And the rest of this is basic positioning and cosmetic stuff. The dialog box has a background of black and it has a fixed position because we're going to be positioning it with JavaScript. That way we can land it directly in the middle of the page no matter what the user's screen width is or whatever their browser window width is. We'll just dynamically put it in the center using JavaScript. Now we're going to apply the JavaScript and in this case I'm going to create a little custom object. So we'll go into our script element here and we'll put in the custom object and I named it custom alert. Now after that we're going to put var alert is equal to new custom alert. 
So we're making a new instance of this custom alert object, and the new instance is named alert. Now I want this custom alert to have two methods within it. The first one will be render, and the second one will be OK. So let's type in this.render is equal to function, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. Now the next method I want is this.ok, and that's going to be equal to function, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, closing curly brace. So now my custom alert object has two methods within it that can be called to run, render and ok. Now with a custom confirm box or a custom prompt box situation, you would have different methods here at work. And I'm going to show you those in the following two video tutorials. Now within this render method, we want to set up some variables. The first two variables are going to be the window width and the window height because I need those values in order to position my dialog box in the direct center. Then I want to get object references for the dialog overlay and the dialog box. Those are these elements here. Dialog overlay, dialog box. So now I have object references for those in my JavaScript here. Now what we'll do is apply the overlay. So we'll say dialog overlay dot style dot display is equal to block. So that means it's not style display none anymore. It's style display block. That means it's showing. And then the overlay's height is going to be equal to the window's height. So actually we can run this right now and we can see the overlay being placed on top of the page and disabling the page if we put that alert. So let's go ahead and put our custom alert into place while we're still writing our function. We can type in our alert variable here. We'll just put alert dot and you can see that we have the render method and the OK method available to us now. So I'll click render and that's only if you have uh, an IDE or a code editor that shows you which methods are available to which objects. My code editor happens to show me when I just put a dot after an object, it shows me which methods are available or which functions I can run for that object. So I type in alert.render method and then I put the argument that I want. So I have to scoop that argument up here and I'll do that in a moment. But I don't have to do it right now. We just want to see the overlay come into place. And let's change what this says. Let's say custom alert. So let's remove that initiate. We don't need that default alert and custom alert. So now I'm going to run this in my favorite browser and click custom alert. Now you can see the overlay came into place. I can't interact with anything on the web page until that overlay is removed. And since we already have a dialog box reference here, the object reference, we can go ahead and set some of its style properties. So we'll say dialog box style dot left is equal to the windows width divided by two minus whatever your dialog box window width is times 0.5 which is basically divided by 2 also. It's 550 divided by 2 so you're taking the window divided by 2 minus whatever your dialog box width is divided by 2 and that's how many pixels that the left position is going to be. That, that will center the dialog box directly in the middle of the user's window and then you can set the top property and that can also be dynamic if you like and you can use this window.h value to set a dynamic top position. But I just wanted to push it off the top of the window 100 pixels. That's fine for my needs. And then we finally set its display to block so it's showing. So now if we run this, custom alert, now we see our dialog box. But it has nothing in its head, body, and footer yet. So let's fix that. We're going to target the dialog box head, body, and foot and we're going to affect their inner HTML properties to put whatever we want in there. So I'm writing the string acknowledge this message. And you can see we can put HTML or string data, whatever we want in here. And then the dialog box body has to get a dynamic dialog that is set down here because that's the argument that we're passing through is the actual message, the dialog that you want. So in order to get that there dynamically as this variable called dialog, we're going to scoop that up in the argument of that render method. So you can see down here we have alert.render and we're passing one argument. We scoop that argument up here as dialog. So dialog within this function is going to be equal to whatever message that you want to say. 
So that's the string data you put within the dialog box body. And then in the dialog box foot, you put a button with an on click event that's going to fire off the alert.ok okay method. Now in the OK method down here, you want to make sure that you are removing the dialog box and the dialog box overlay or the web page overlay. Make their style.display equal to none. Now everything should be populated in our box, so let's check it out. Custom alert, and there's everything. We have all this data that we want in the box. We press OK, and the OK function fires off the OK method within our custom alert object. Now I can use that over and over again dynamically. I could put another alert, custom alert 2, and this will say, and you also smell very nice. So now I'll have two different custom alerts with different messages. See? And you also smell very nice. This one says you look very pretty today. And that's all the logic behind how this works. Now in the next two tutorials I'll be showing you how to make a custom confirm box which is the most popular request I get and a custom prompt box. We'll do prompt box in the third tutorial. Now a custom confirm box, we can use this same exact uh, dialog overlay and dialog box. We're just going to populate its head, body, and foot with different dynamic content. And a confirm box takes a little more logic because you're letting the user choose either yes or no to confirm some critical action that's happening in the program. For instance, if they want to delete something and you have a social network, let's say, and they, you want to let the user delete something, if they press that delete button, sometimes you want to put up a dialogue that says, are you sure you want to delete that? Because maybe they don't intend to delete something and they hit the delete button by accident. That's where confirm window comes in handy. You say, are you sure you want to delete that? And then you give them a little yes or no button. So that'll be in the next tutorial.